Good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome back to Digital Discipleship. Tonight, I'm coming to you from a special location uh, in El Paso, Texas, uh, where my family is. Uh, spent Thanksgiving down here with them. We are flying back tomorrow, so uh, prayers for safe travels would be highly appreciative if y'all uh, could keep us in mind. Uh, so yeah, I'm sitting in a green room right now, and you can't really see it. Unfortunately, the sun's shining kind of bright through it, but there's beautiful plants all around me and gorgeous trees and whatnot. Uh, and behind me is actually our family tree. So on the tree is my parents, and below them is their children and grandchildren. And uh, just a very cool decoration that we have here at my parents' house down in El Paso. So anyway, tonight we're going to get into the book of 1 Peter. Now we're coming up real close to the end of this thing. And remember, we're going to do a big seven-week study of the book of Revelation through 2022. And it's going to look a little different. It's going to be real nice. So I'm, I'm excited for that. You shall be excited for that. And I hope you guys tune in for that as it comes um, later down the road. But tonight we're being 1 Peter. Uh, and so 1 Peter is a book written uh, by Peter, who was an apostle of Jesus. Uh, and his original name was Simon. A lot of people know him as Simon or Simon Peter or just Peter. Uh, and it was interesting because Jesus was actually the one who changed his name. He changed his name to Peter, meaning the rock. Uh, and it was so cool how, given that name, Peter is a man who has uh, shown the intensity of what it's like to be a believer in Christ. So if you look at the first couple chapters of the book of Acts, it really talks a lot about his ministry and what he did for uh, for the church and for the, the Jews and the Gentiles and how he shared a lot of truth with them and whatnot. So Peter is a fantastic example of, of a believer of Christianity, but he also wrote two great letters, First and Second Peter. And this week we'll get into First Peter and next week we'll get into Second Peter. Uh, it's interesting. First Peter was written about AD 63, give or take. Um, and it's really a, uh, a book of encouragement and, and direction for so many of the churches in Asia Minor, which is kind of modern day Turkey. Uh, it's very, very uh, geared toward talking about how persecution and, and abuse of the Christians were, were very par for the course, right? It's very common that you're going to have that way, especially because you're believing uh, in the true Messiah and the world doesn't want to acknowledge that. It's very, very relevant and very, very uh, parallel to today's modern society, how a lot of believers are being persecuted for their faith and for their ideals uh, in following Jesus Christ. So the purpose and the main purpose of First Peter is to offer encouragement to suffering Christians. Uh, and it has a lot of themes talking about, um, talking about salvation. It talks about persecution of the believers. It talks about uh, obedience, uh, submission. Uh, there's so many things that it mentions. And we're going to kind of focus on a few scriptures here tonight. I'm going to break them down for you. Some key scriptures in First Peter that a lot of people really pay attention to. And, and some of them you'll recognize very quoted scriptures and whatnot. But a little uh, side note that I want to share about First Peter is that it was not actually written by Peter. It was spoken and dictated by Peter, but it was really written by a friend of his named Silas. So Peter is actually very up in age at this point. Like I said, it was written about AD 63. And if Peter was already an established fisherman in AD 30, when Jesus called him to ministry, Peter, we can guess, was probably about 35, 36, or even 40 years old. So this is 30 years later. He's probably sitting somewhere in his 80s, right? He's an old man. He's in Rome, and he asks his friend Silas to write the two letters of First and Second Peter to the Gentile churches and the persecuted churches all over Asia Minor. And you can look at that in the very last chapter 5, uh, the very last chapter of 1 Peter, chapter 5, in verse 12, it says, I have written and sent this short letter with you, uh, to you with help from Silas, whom I command to you as a faithful brother. My purpose in writing is to encourage you and assure you that what you are experiencing is truly part of God's grace for you. Stand firm in his grace. That's 1 Peter 5.12. Um, all right, so let's get into a little, let's, let's get in, let's dive in here, right? Let's dive into 1 Peter. So 1 Peter uh, chapter 1 is a lot about the greetings from Peter. He talks about how he's an apostle of Christ. He talks about he's written this for God's chosen people, uh, living as foreigners in provinces of Pontus and Galatea, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. So there's all these places that he's writing this letter to. So it was, it was sent out all over the world, basically. Uh, and then he kind of gets into the hope of eternal life, and he talks about 
how um, deep our faith needs to be. And it's really cool because he makes a point in hope that when you're facing trials, it can be from the Lord and something that God gives us as an opportunity to grow closer to him and to grow in our faith. Check it out. First Peter 1 verse 7, it says, These trials will show that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold. Through your faith, though your faith is far more precious than mere gold. So when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. He's encouraging you that when you're going through something tough, that your faith and clinging to your faith and holding on to it is something that will honor God and also bring um, God to, to, to uh, uplift you in that moment of Christ revealing himself to the world. Um, all right, so chapter 2 kind of gets into um, being a part of God's home. Excuse me, a part of God's house and who he is. Um, and then it talks about respecting people in authority. It talks about how slaves should behave. Chapter 3 gets into how wives and husbands and all Christians should behave, right? Um, but I love this in 1 Peter 2, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. Paul, Peter makes a point to acknowledge the faithful believers in Jesus Christ and who they are. And here's a verse that many of you uh, uh, may have known. It says, but you are not like that. For you are a chosen people, you are a royal priest, a holy nation, God's very own possession. As a result, you can show others the goodness of God, for he called you out of darkness into his wonderful or marvelous, some translations say, wonderful or marvelous light. And it's so cool how Peter's saying you are chosen and you are redeemed by the creator of the universe and he wants to use you and guide you and make you into something way more than what you actually are. All right, so First Peter 3, like I said, gets into husbands, gets into wives honoring their husbands, uh, husbands honoring their wives, and then it talks about all Christians and how they should behave. And it talks about how the suffering that you feel can be something that does good. So check this out. In First Peter 3, 15, he says, Instead, you must worship Christ as Lord of your life. And when someone asks you about your hope as a believer, always be ready to explain it. But do this in a gentle and respectful way, keeping your conscience clear. Then if people speak against you, they will be ashamed when they see what a good life you live because you belong to Christ. So Paul, Peter's basically uh, teaching us that we should be ready to defend the word of God. We should be ready to know and, and speak his truth and his word, right? But it's also saying that do it with love. We are so quick to want to pounce on someone and prove them wrong that instead of fighting to prove them wrong, maybe we should work on just proving ourselves right. And that's something that Peter's encouraging us to do. Do it with love and compassion and care. Because later on, when they try to disprove you and it becomes that you were right all along, they will be the one ashamed, not you. So live in that uh that encouragement from Peter. Uh, chapter 4 talks about living for God and suffering for being a Christian. Chapter 5, he gets an advice for elders and young men, and then he gives his final greetings, right? So it's got a really nice uh, layout and design. The theme kind of stays all the way through to the end, uh, and Peter does such a great job of um, speaking truth and encouragement and keeping people straight in all these provinces all over. And I'm going to leave you guys with this. Right, It's a very famous verse of scripture, and it's a warning that Peter gives right towards the end of his letter. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6 says this, So humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, and at the right time he will lift you up in honor. Give all your worries to him, for he worries, or, I'm sorry, give all your worries and cares to God, for he cares about you. Cast your cares on him, for he cares for you. Very famous verse of scripture, 1 Peter 5, 7. But goes on to 1 Peter 5, 8. Stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Stand firm against him, be strong in your faith, and remember that your family of believers all over the world is going through the same kind of suffering. In other words, Peter's saying, watch out for the devil, because he's not just attacking you, he's attacking all of your fellow believers as well. Which is why we are constantly encouraged in Scripture to stand firm together, to stand united, because united we are much stronger than singular. And Peter is really, really challenging us to do that there at the end of his first letter, and it's so beautiful and it's so powerful. Um, so a couple of key verses to remember, 1 Peter 3, 15, 1 Peter 5, 5 through 9, and uh, 1 Peter 1, 7. Uh, 
So kind of look at those as you study First Peter this week, as you read through the book, uh, get into God's Word and pray and pay attention. Uh, remember that this Wednesday night we have a men's group at 6.30 down in the Fellowship Hall. Come for dinner, hang out, and we're going to be watching uh, parts 5 and 6 of The Armor of God from Tony Evans. So watch those on Right Now Media before you come, and we'll have a study time ready to go as we fellowship <coughs> Excuse me, and work through all of that. Um, just looking forward to coming back with you guys, flying in tomorrow. Please pray that our family arrives safely, and uh, we'll see you all next week. God bless.